was the boogeyman. As a matter of fact, it was. What's going on, horror fanatics? Welcome to I Shot Him Six Times YouTube Horror Movie Channel. As you know, I'm your host and creator of the channel, Marcus. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about Danielle Harris's recent interview with Screen Rant, where she was doing promotion for her new film, Dark Obsession. But as you would expect, got on the topic of the Halloween franchise. If you haven't done so already, please shoot this video a like. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm a ton. As well as if you happen to be a new viewer to this channel, please shoot that subscribe button as well as that notification icon so you get all the latest content updates to the channel. And if you would like to become a member here to the channel, shoot that join button that you see on the channel dashboard. We start off with this part of the interview in an article that was published by Grant Herman's A Screen Rant that is captioned, Why One Halloween Legacy Character Didn't Return for David Gordon Green's Sequel Trilogy. Exclusive, Halloween franchise star Danielle Harris explains why she didn't reprise her legacy characters for David Gordon Green's Sequel Trilogy. With the recent movies bringing back a variety of legacy actors, Danielle Harris reveals why she didn't return for David Gordon Green's Halloween sequel trilogy. Beginning with the 2018 hit, the recent installments in a long-running horror franchise retconned every sequel prior to it, establishing yet another new timeline in which only the 1978 original had occurred. Jamie Lee Curtis returned as heroine Laurie Strode, once again facing off against Michael Myers as he unleashed terror in Haddonfield, Illinois. While the first was well received, the subsequent Halloween sequels garnered progressively worse reviews and lower box office returns. During a recent interview with Screen Rant for a psychological thriller, Dark Obsession, Harris was asked whether she was ever approached to appear in Green's Halloween trilogy. Though confirming she reached out to Blumhouse to express her interest in returning, she was ultimately never offered a part, but the legacy star was fine with it, feeling she was holding out for one reason. Check out what Harris shared below. No, I actually myself had talked to the guys at Blumhouse and said, hey, I just want you to know, I would love to totally do a little teeny cameo because I would love to work with him and be a part of this. But again, I'd already done Annie and come back for Rob Zombies, and how many times can I come back as another character realistically without it being stupid? So I got it, but I had talked to them about other ideas that I had for the franchise and living in it for as long as I've lived in it and what I would love to see happen. Obviously, I've said from the beginning, I would love to see where Jamie is now as an adult. I wouldn't come back to the movie as anything other than that, and I'm hoping that now they've got the rights to the TV series and all these things in the universe, the whole Halloween world, I'm really hoping that they find a timeline where they can go back and explore where I am right now because I would sure love to know. Harris's Halloween return could have set up a new future. Given Green's Halloween trilogy retcon prior sequels, it's understandable Harris didn't reprise her iconic role of Jamie Lloyd for the new movies. Introduced in 1988's The Return of Michael Myers, Jamie was the secret daughter of Curtis's Laurie, even renamed as such to homage the franchise's original star, and as such, was the niece of Michael Myers. Despite the movie setting up a bizarre passing of the torch between the two, its sequel ultimately saw Jamie and Michael share a telepathic link, while its infamous follow-up The Curse of Michael Myers saw an adult version of the character murdered. With Green's Halloween movies introducing a different Laurie daughter and Judy Greer's Karen, Harris returning for the new trilogy could have set up an interesting new path forward for Jamie. Given it was revealed that Laurie had a troubled life in the years after the John Carpenter classic, it still could have been explained that Harris's Jamie was the offspring of another failed marriage, but that her father elected to raise her away from Haddonfield. This still would have involved retconning Jamie's original encounters with Michael, but could have opened the door to Harris' character returning to town to learn more about her heritage and subsequently facing Michael. The one hurdle this would have presented for Green would be revisiting the infamous familial ties between Michael and Laurie revealed in 1981's Halloween 2. Green's first movie quickly did away with this notion, a move celebrated by most Halloween fans. However, given how divisive this trilogy ultimately became as Laurie progressively became more of a supporting player than an active participant in bringing Michael down, not only would retaining this concept have made more sense for bringing Harris's Jamie into the fold, but also could have provided a more meaningful closure to the franchise with Halloween ends. With Harris still keen to explore Jamie's future in the franchise, one can hope that the next filmmaker finds a creative way to bring the iconic character back. Okay, so the first thing that I want to touch on is that there would have been no way that Danielle could have reprised her role as Annie Brackett from Rob Zombie's Halloween films in David Gordon Green's trilogy of Halloween. For the simple fact is that Rob Zombie's Halloween films are their own entity, take place in a different timeline compared to David Gordon Green's Halloween trilogy. As we are all well aware, if you watch the Rob Zombie movies, then 
the character Annie Brackett actually survived past the remake, the first film. And in the original film, in the 1978 classic, Annie Brackett's character gets killed off by Michael Myers. And David Gordon Green's trilogy that starts off with Halloween 2018 picks up 40 years directly after the events of Halloween 1978. So it would have made no sense at all for Danielle to reprise her role as Annie Brackett in David Gordon Green's trilogy. However, in terms of her returning as Jamie Lloyd in David Gordon Green's trilogy, I think it could have it could have happened. In terms of it working, in my opinion, I don't see how it would have hit or been well received by fans. For the simple fact is that they took away they took away the familial ties. You know, by taking away the familial ties, Jamie is no longer Michael's niece. And that is what she is known for. She is known for being Michael Myers' niece. Danielle Harris is known for being the niece of Michael Myers in the Halloween franchise. So when you take that away, you're taking away the main component of what made the character so lovable. And when you add into the fact that Danielle Harris herself has said that, and she said it here in this interview, that she would not come back to do a Halloween movie unless she is playing Jamie Lloyd, the niece of Michael Myers. So with that being said, I personally do not think, even if they tried to, the return of Jamie Lloyd in David Gordon Green's trilogy doesn't work unless you have her be the niece of Michael Myers. And of course, Lori and Michael are brother and sister. Now, what is also a little bit interesting in terms of how you could have did it, it just wouldn't have been as impactful as I said, is when you think of Karen Strode's character, she did say that she was in foster care at some point. And as we are all well aware, Jamie Lloyd's character, when we get introduced to her, she is living with a foster family in the Carruthers family. So if you wanted to play off of that, and add Jamie into that. That's the only thing reminiscent to what we know and love about the character from Halloween 4 and 5 that would have been familiar in Halloween 2018. Other than that, they would have completely stripped everything away that we loved about the character. And I personally just don't think that it would have worked, which is why, in my opinion, it was a smart idea to not offer her a part as Jamie Lloyd in David Gordon Green's Halloween trilogy. Harris was then asked how she felt about Green's last entry into his Halloween trilogy with Halloween Ends, where she was quoted in saying, I liked a lot of it. I liked the last one. I just didn't like it as a Halloween movie. I think if it hadn't been called Halloween Ends, it would have received great reviews. The fans are really particular about Michael Myers, and I get it. I totally get it. Without Jamie Lee Curtis in it, I don't know how well it necessarily would have done, obviously, but you have her and everyone's going to go see it. Now, what's interesting about Danielle's comments about Halloween Ends is that the concept of the Michael Myers copycat or a new character taking over as the main antagonist in the franchise moving on from Michael actually was spawned in the Halloween 4. As in the final act of the film, you see Harris's character Jamie approach Michael after her foster sister Rachel runs him down with the truck. Jamie touches Michael's hand, which not only gives her a telepathic link to him, but also passes the evil in him onto her, similar to what we see with Corey Cunningham's character in Halloween ends. This was confirmed when in the ending of Halloween 4 at the Carruthers residence, we see Jamie from her point of view, reminiscent to Michael as a kid in Halloween 1978, enter the bathroom and stab her foster mother with a pair of scissors, which led to this iconic reaction from Dr. Loomis. There was even a rough draft script written to explore this concept with Jamie in the original plans for Halloween 5, but as we are well aware, that didn't come to fruition. If it did play out the way that they wanted to for Halloween 5, I wonder if Danielle would have felt the same about that film in the way that she does Halloween Ends, in terms of it not feeling like a Halloween slash Michael Myers movie, because they would have done the same thing that Ends did, which was make Michael Myers a background character while introducing a new antagonist. If I ever get the opportunity to interview her, I would definitely pose that question.
But overall, I agree with Danielle's comments on Halloween Ends. As many of you know how I feel about that movie, so I'm not going to waste time ranting and raving on it like I've done plenty of times before. And I must agree that without Jamie Lee Curtis being in Halloween Ends and the marketing showcase in the final showdown between Laurie Strode and Michael Myers, Halloween Ends would have did worse financially than it did at the box office. You can even make the argument that without bringing Jamie Lee back for the trilogy entirely, that David Gordon Green's Halloween films would have bombed, especially with bringing in new characters that we weren't familiar with in the franchise. The return of Jamie Lee Curtis and the Laurie Strode character is what piqued the fans' interest for more Halloween films and Michael Myers again. We now move on to the part of the interview where Danielle discusses what she would like to see happen with the Halloween franchise moving forward. As the article continues to read, the Jamie Lloyd and Annie Brackett actor felt that the only way for the franchise to succeed following the divisive response to Green's Legacy trilogy is to give complete creative control to whichever filmmaker is at the helm for future installments. Recalling, that was part of what made the movies she was involved in work. Check out what Harris explained below. I think they did a great job with what they had for sure. It's hard. Studios are hard. There's a lot of players, a lot of rules. I learned that from the difference between Halloween 4 and 5 versus working on Rob Zombie's Halloween. 4 and 5 was 100% creative in producers and director control. They were all team players. Where you have now the studio involved and you've got other forces at play that make decisions based on things outside of the art and the story. I'm hoping that maybe we get to go back to the way that it used to be because it'd be lovely to get back into Halloween as Jamie and have it not be a studio feel. Have it kind of how it was in the 80s. Wouldn't that be great? That's what the fans want. The studios are churning out movies that the fans are not wanting to see, where if they just kept it simple and let us do what we know. I think they were marketing to the wrong people. It's like when they brought Lori's daughter. I'm totally blanking on her name right now. That actress, she's fantastic. As an actress, I'm a huge fan of hers, but she's not Lori's daughter. But I get, marketing-wise, she's a big movie star and incredibly talented, and it's all this draw. But if you just keep it simple and keep it the way fans want to see, I think they'll be even more successful than they already could be. Okay, so I 100% agree with everything that Danielle had to say in this quote. We have talked about it here many a times on this channel and across many channels that you guys know that I'm affiliated with about studios not only having a role in creative control and really kind of hurting the artwork of the filmmaker and not allowing the filmmaker and the creative team to do what they know how to do best, but also when it comes to paying the actors treating the actors fairly, treating the actors such as human beings. You see this happening right now with Scream 7, with the Scream franchise, with Spyglass Media. The studios, it's all about the money and it's not about what fans want to see and what the creators want to make. And it is truly upsetting as a fan of horror movies and a fan of movies in general because that leaves us with so little room to progress especially in horror movies because we talk about it all the time you know not only do we want to see fresh ideas for our iconic horror movie villains and characters such as Michael Myers such as Jason Voorhees Freddy Krueger so on and so forth but we also want to see fresh ideas for new horror movie villains and new horror movie stories and when you have studios that are only worried about the money and the name of said film, it really puts a damper on how much creativity and how much content that we can get in a horror genre if they would just take a step back and let these creators create. I agree with Danielle. We could be a lot more successful. Horror could be a lot more successful than it already is. If you just take a step back, do your job as an executive. Let these creators do their job as creators. It's really that simple. The biggest thing that Daniel said in this quote to me was simplicity. It's keeping it simple, keeping it the way that fans want to see it. You know, just like with all these Disney horror movies that's coming out, we have all talked about this. We know these characters as our childhood iconic characters, like they're, they're kid characters. Why are you trying to turn these type of characters into horror movie villains when it just turns out cheesy and it turns out slacky? It turns out like it just doesn't turn out good. And that's the truth of the matter. 
So again, I 100% agree with what Danielle said about the studios. You know, I think you can definitely tell the difference between the 80s, the 90s, compared to the 2000s and beyond when it comes to creative control, who's doing these movies in terms of who's who's really doing the movies. Is it the creator doing their movie or is it the studio making the creator do their type of movie that they want to see and that they want to promote and that they want to produce? So again, guys, like I applaud Danielle for really coming out and opening up about this because us as fans, we talk about it enough. When we can get the actors to start speaking about it and calling it out for what it is, in my opinion, that just makes the possibility of change that much more possible and that much more greater. And hopefully we get more actors like Danielle that speak out about this so that we can start getting movies made the way that we want to see them made, especially in the horror genre. And as you guys are well aware, as she had stated earlier in the interview and that I touched on earlier, Danielle wants to come back to Halloween. She wants to be a part of the TV series. She wants another Halloween movie done. She wants Ellie Cornell to come back. Dwight H. Little, the director of Halloween 4, recently spoke about him wanting to get back on board with Halloween as well and finish the story that him and Alan B. McElroy wanted to do with Jamie Lloyd's character, Rachel Carruthers' character after the events of Halloween 4. Whether that comes to fruition remains to be seen. But I feel like the more that us fans who want to see that, who want to see Danielle Harris back as Jamie Lloyd in the Halloween franchise, the more we continue to talk about it, the more we continue to push the agenda for her and for Ellie Cornell and for Dwight H. Little and hopefully Alan B. McElroy, the greater the possibility that we could get the return of all of them in the next Halloween movie, as well as the Halloween TV series. But okay, everyone, that is it for this video. Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts on Danielle's comments from the interview. Would you have liked to see her character, Jamie Lloyd, retconned in Halloween 2018? What do you make of her comments on Halloween Ends, especially considering the similarities between the original concept for Halloween 5 and Halloween Ends? As well as, what are your thoughts on her calling the studios out? And are you on board with her making a return as Jamie Lloyd in the Halloween TV series, the next film, or both? Once again, this is our Shop Six Times YouTube Horror Movie Channel. I'm your host and creator of the channel, Marcus. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. Thank you all for watching.